in Swami fashion. Remember how Joe Lewis used to train and then come down to talk to writers in Compton Lakes, New Jersey, with the towel over his head in that same way? Sonny Liston, too, for that matter. That's Joe Frazier. They spent a lot of time taping Joe's ankles in the dressing room. You're looking at Ali again and Joe. Joe, of course, a terribly grim man where Ali is concerned. It showed in his preparation in the last fight and again in this one. That skirmish those weeks ago that you read so much about, that was real as far as Joe Frazier was concerned. He feels that through the years, Ali has given him needless verbal abuse. And a prideful man, Joe Frazier is. He never did take to it kindly. You're looking back in Ali, and as we await the introduction of the fighters, quickly let me cover the rules for you. We will, of course, have the mandatory eight count. Three knockdowns within a round. The fight is over. This is not a championship fight. It's a scheduled 12-rounder. They have not waived the three knockdown rule. There will be no saving by the bell. Scoring will be on a per round system with a supplemental point system in the event of a tie based upon the round scoring. The referee will be a relatively young man, Tony Perez. He is, I think, an outstanding referee in his first very big fight, Ellis Frazier, which this reporter worked. Perez showed an absolute ability to command the fighters. You're looking at young Tony now. Oh, always maintaining what a referee must maintain above all else. Perfect position to see that no undue harm is done, that no low blows go unheeded, and all of the rest. Perez has the youth, the swiftness, the know-how, and the strength to execute his job. The judges, two veteran judges, Tony Cascalano and Jack Gordon. Now the ring announcer, Joe Boston. See, this is the headline event on this evening's boxing program from Madison Square Garden in New York. The distance is 12 rounds. The principles in this headline event for the evening coming from Philadelphia at, what, 209 pounds even. He's wearing white trunks former world heavyweight champion, Smokin' Joe Frazier. The introduction of Joe, who now gets a chorus of cheers with an admixture of vocal disapproval. And Louisville, Kentucky, at 212 pounds. He's wearing white trunks also. Wearing white trunks, former world heavyweight champion also, Mr. Muhammad Ali. We'll be back for the start of the fight in a moment. Bell for round one, the action begins. Frazier's task to stay all over Ali. Don't give Ali jabbing room. Ali's task to stay away. Use his most effective blow, the left jab. If there's any punch in Ali left, it would be in the left hook. The right hand, as you all know, is suspect. It's been damaged again and again and again. And there is an apparent bursitis between the knuckles. At the same time as Frazier follows Ali, he must be careful not to do what he did in the first fight. Move the right foot ahead of the left. He must angle his approach as he's doing now. Lagging the right leg to give Ali only a slanting shot at the Frazier face. Watch these things closely as the fight develops. Stop on a dime. Stop on a dime. pulling the shuffle in the first round and he said he'd be doing no clowning. Ali dancing, circling in the main steadily to the left and using the left jab whenever he can. Look at Joe. 
he is lagging the right leg, which is a change of style for him. That enables him to cut off the ring on the Al on Ali. You're looking good, baby. Tough. Stay me. Between the elbows. Between the elbows. Ali has also said in his pre-fight propaganda that he will not allow himself to languish against the ropes as he did in the first fight. We have a minute to go in round one. Joe working on the body and getting in a lift to the body directly above us. Ali with two quick ones to the head, the left and the right in combination and another left. Note that the continual pursuer is Frazier, which was the case in the first fight. Ali again with a quick combination. It was a right lead and then the left. So he did use the right. Ten seconds left in the round. The bell for round two. Both fighters in white trunks. You know them each. You don't need any more identification, though, for any neophytes who might be watching, as Frazier comes right at Ali, trying to do damage immediately. Ali's black trim goes up to the black belt. Ali using that left jab as he did in the first fight. The very tactic Frazier had to be sure to expect. You got the stick to keep it. You got the stick to keep the justice. The crowd yells when Joe lands a left hook and he got in a good one to the belly. The crowd remembers the damage Frazier did in the last fight with that left hook. Hitting Muhammad often to the stomach and wearing him down. Ali has been dancing throughout this fight on his toes steadily. Dancing is one thing. Movement is another. You can't dance for 12 or 15 rounds as Ali says. There's no way. Clever movement is what you need. Covering up while Joe flails away, and Ali got in a good right to the head. But the crowd is now, at least those around us, calling for Joe because he continues to pursue and to be the aggressor in the battle. We've got a minute left to go in round two. It's round two. Come on, Joe! Referee Perez separates the fighters. Ali continues to move, as you can see. Joe coming at him. Much the same as in the early rounds of the first fight. And that was a good right. Joe was staggered there. Joe's backing off for the first time in the fight. He was hurt by that right of Ali's. Referee Tony Perez separates the fight. It calls for the end of the round, but I didn't hear a bell. Bertie Pacheco takes out Muhammad Ali's mouthpiece, and now referee Perez calls them back to finish the round. A confusing incident, but that's the way it is. The bell for round two. As you can see, Ali without his mouthpiece. 
He got in a good right near the end of that round just before Tony Perez made the mistake. Now in slow motion, watch in the early part of the round, Frazier connect with a real good left. And Ali will follow with a good right. Watch closely. There's the left. Now, Ali right back with the right as Frazier dropped his left after delivering. Now this is close to the end of the round. And watch for the right that I talked about that backed Frazier off and indeed staggered. Ali sets it up with the two left jabs, and there's the right connecting cleanly. Now watch closely. Joe Frazier backing off for the first time in the fight. He was hurt, no question about it. No, it's not for the heavyweight championship of the world, but as I said at the top of the show, curiously, some of the magic of the first fight is here in this crowd, in its anticipation, and I'm sure all over the country. Quickly, Joe came at Ali, who's in his own corner, and they're flailing away, and just as quickly, Ali scored with a left and a right and a left to the head. How much can Frazier take? Will Ali be able to render the punishment that he did the last time, even though he lost? Since that time, Joe took tremendous punishment. Six knockdowns from George Foreman and had trouble even with Joe Buckner over in London. But how much can Ali punch? How much can he hurt at this stage of his career? Cut him under. There it is. Come on, Joe. That's it. Little less than two minutes left in round three. I'll tell you this, in the first fight, Ali was waving in disdain at Frazier, and he was clowning. He's living up to this point, apart from the quick evidence of the Ali shuffle, by his promise not to clown. The roar from the crowd as Joe connected with only a glancing, a grazing left against Ali's jaw. But such is the nature of Joe's power in that left hook that the crowd will roar every time he throws it. Frazier smiling momentarily in the middle of the ring. A minute left in round three. That's Joe's way of showing his disdain for Ali's absence of punching power as Joe views Hear the crowd yell when Joe threw that left, which missed. I must say, up to this point, Ali has been a master at stopping Joe's left with his gloves. Joe, Joe again taking the Ali jab. Ten seconds left in the third round. We'll be going back to round four in just a second, but we have some college basketball scores for you now. In an upset, Cincinnati beat Marquette 92 to 77. South Carolina defeated Houston 104 to 86, and Pittsburgh beat West Virginia 83 to 78. Getting back to the fight, you know, keeping the official scoring that night was uh, Judge Tony Castellano, uh, Judge Jack Gordon, and referee Tony Perez. Uh, at this stage in the fight after three rounds, Judge Castellano had Ali ahead 3-0, Judge Gordon had Ali ahead 2-1, and Perez, referee Perez, had Ali 2-1. All three had Ali winning the first two rounds. Now, let's go back to my man Howard for round four. Round four is underway. Oh, 
Drew Brown Bundini is screaming all night long. Clearly at the moment, at the moment, Ali is dominant. He's scoring with his left, and he's throwing the right more than one might have expected and frequently landing. Wait for that Go back dancing. Keep dancing. Keep dancing. Don't get on your Box back in time. This, of course, is a scheduled 12 round. 20,748 people have paid a gross of $1,053,688 here at Madison Square Garden tonight. Two minutes left in the fourth round. Those figures just a reflection of the national interest in this bout. You're going to hear Drew Brown Bundini behind me all night. Frazier trying to strike at Ali while in the corner, but the blows picked off by Ali's gloves. Ali using the jab effectively. Still dancing. Remember, he danced, as he puts it, for the first four rounds of the first fight. Always on his toes. Minute left in round four. It's too early to tell, but one does have to at least conjure with the notion that Ali is indeed in much better shape than he was for their first match. And up to this point, he certainly looks better than he did in either match against Norton and against Rudy Lubers in Indonesia. Rudy Lubers, you remember him. A little Dutch heavyweight whom Ali never even threw a right at. The end of the round, back in a moment. You're looking at Joe Frazier's corner. Manager Eddie Futch working over him. The only visible damage to Frazier at this point is lodged in the right eye, which is definitely bloodshot. It's, there's been no discernible trickle of blood from the corner of the eye, but it's been the recipient of a goodly number of Ali lefts up to this point. Again, as you see Ali, he's not even sitting down in his corner. Well, he used that tactic against Norton in the second fight. I'm not sure that's Drew Brown Bundini next to him that it's the wisest thing in the world, but it is an evidence of confidence if the adversary takes it seriously. Round five is underway. Tony Perez is the referee. Then Joe scored. He scored with two quick ones to the stomach, the chest, and then a third to the right cheek of Ali. Frazier looked good in that last exchange in the corner. You heard the roar of the crowd, and if you remember the first fight, clearly Frazier started to come on strongly in the fifth round. That was a 15-rounder. This is only a 12-rounder. Watch and see if Ali drops that right after he throws it, because Frazier took great advantage of that in the first fight with his left hook. Frazier contends that Ali cannot keep his hands up except when he's against the ropes. A minute 30 in the fifth round, a minute 30 left. 
you don't want to draw judgments too quickly. But it does seem that Ali is back against the ropes more in this round than he has been in the prior ones. You don't see the movement in Ali in this round to the same degree that you saw in the prior four. Less than a minute to go in round five. And there's Ali wrestling against the ropes. Okay, champ. Okay, champ. All night long it's gonna be like that. Less than 30 seconds in round five. All night long. Less than 10 seconds. The countdown in round five. There it is. And now the bell for round six. The action begins. Ali with a flurry, only some of which got through Frazier's gloves. He threw about six punches. Three perhaps got through. Joe landed a left hook, but in the interim, Ali landed two lefts and a right. Joe's been talking to Ali, and Ali, in the meantime, got in a good left and a good right. Joe was actually taunting Ali and then got belted. Maybe if no greater action happens in this round, we'll have a look between rounds at that left and right. Because at the moment, Joe, who's taking left after left now, was saying, you can't hurt me. In that effect, you've got no punch. But Ali, with a minute 30 left in round six, has scored repeatedly with lefts and rights up to this point in the round. Minute left in round six. Thus far, a very effective round for Ali. Unlike round six in the first fight, when clearly he was beginning to run downhill. Although he did come back in the ninth and tenth in that fight. Thirty seconds left in the round. A very good round up to this point for Ali. Less than ten seconds to go in the round. All right, in slow-mo, let's look at that Ali left and right. Now watch. Frazier coming at him. There's the left, there's the right. Perfect combination. One has to wonder about Ali's punch. The boxing skill seems to be there up to this point tonight. One has to wonder what would happen to Frazier if those punchers 
were Foreman or Frazier type punches. He's getting instructions from Eddie Futch. Now he's getting the jelly over each eye. Actually, Joe's eyes aren't as puffy at this point as they were in the first fight. Just that bloodshotness in the right eye and maybe that slight cut. Round seven of a scheduled 12 round. Joe scoring with a left and the crowd responding to it. They expect dynamite out of every left hook that Frazier scores with. Joe again with a left hook and scoring. Joe, Joe forcing Ali into Ali's corner. but the crowd now responsive to Frazier's left hook, sensing many of them and sensing perhaps some, perhaps many, that Joe is beginning to come on, knowing of his knockout ability, moving down to the midsection to weaken Ali and get him to drop his guard. Stop it. Ali is being told don't do that by Drew Brown Bundini. He could mean any one of several things. Don't hold, don't stay in the corner. Or he could mean don't wink at the press as Ali did just a few seconds ago. Referee Perez breaking them up. Ali trying to keep distance now and use his weapon the left. George Foreman it was who said Ali after landing combination should move in and hold to avoid Frazier's counter punching. Frazier has always been the kind of fighter who likes to let you swing at him and then come back with his blow. And so you saw Ali after that other combination come in and hold which is a sensible thing to do. Frazier continues to talk to Ali from time to time in the fight. It's round seven with 30 seconds left. Perez warning Ali on hitting on the break. Ali still using the left. We'll go back for round eight in just a second. But, you know, during the uh, Superstars competition, we had a little break in the action, and all the guys got together, and we played a little round of Simon Says. Now, ABC had planned to show you that today. Instead, we're going to show it to you tomorrow during the Superstars show. Uh, you know, in round seven, that was the first time Smoking Joe Frazier had won a round on all three judges' cards. One judge had him now 4-2-1 uh, Ali. Another judge had it 5-2 Ali. And referee Perez had it. 4-2-1 Ali. Now let's go back to Howard for round eight. There's the bell for round eight in this fight. Frazier appeared to be coming on strongly in round seven with that early left hook attack that scored. Now Joe is really trying to put it to Ali. Ali ducking that left hook. is now solidly roaring every time Frazier throws a punch. Ali is 
getting fatigued. You saw Joe talking to him then and taunting him and scoring with the left hook. And Ali's right seems to be carried much lower than in the early going. Ali complaining to Perez. I know not what about. Ali holding much more in this round. Slowed up, I think, manifestly. That left took by Joe caught Ali's glove. I must say that in this round, uh, at least, Ali has really slowed down. You don't see anything like the movement in Ali in this round that you saw in the early rounds. Frazier trying to swarm all over him and score, but Joe not doing that well either in perfect candor. Quick combination by Ali and another left and another left and a right. Suddenly a flurry scored by Ali. One tactic the Ali camp wanted was for Ali to finish each round strong. Frazier did that in the last fight, and it was an effective tactic with the judges. A right by Frazier as the bell rings for the end of round eight. Watch this right. There it is, and the right is not usually an effective Frazier weapon. All right, Angelo Dundee working on Muhammad Ali, sitting in his corner. Frazier is dancing around, laughing, taunting Ali. It's Frazier who's waving, come at me. It's Frazier who's showing all the confidence in the world. Confidence that he believes he's in utter command in this fight. Going at Ali, who's against the ropes. Quite a different picture from the first couple of rounds of the fight. It'll be no contest, Ali said. A professional against an amateur. A good flurry in there. The fighter's going at it. Crowd yelled at that left, but clearly it missed. doing better in this round that up to this point that seems clear Joe threw a right that grazed Ali's shoulder there is blood coming out of Ali's right nostril just a touch of it but there it is a minute 30 left in round nine remember this one's only a 12 round That blood must have been occasioned by the right that Frazier landed in the last round because his nose looked a little red, Ali's did, as he came out for the ninth round, and the blood has reappeared. A minute left in round nine. For all the 
of Frazier's taunting of Ali. I must say, thus far, Ali has dominated this round. Landed six, seven punches in a row there. The bell, they continued fighting just after it, but that had to be a good round for Ali, as you saw with your own eyes. We'll be getting back for the 10th round in just a second, but we have some more highlights from the world of sports. In college basketball, Providence defeated St. John's 85-67. to Notre Dame beat Villanova 115-85. Ohio State defeated Indiana 85-77. to And North Carolina beat Duke 96-92. In the National Hockey League, the Boston Bruins 4, the Detroit Red Wings 4. Philadelphia beat Buffalo 4-2. In track and field, we reported earlier that the Russians defeated the USA in track and field in Moscow, 158 to 124. Well, the event was marred by a display of apparent bad temper by a young female American trackster, Miss Mary Decker. You know, Mary Decker has been setting all kind of records in indoor track and field this year. And in the race she threw, in a relay race, she threw her baton at a Russian opponent. It, it, she felt that a Russian opponent elbowed her on the curve. Well, in any event, both teams were disqualified, and I guess we'll read a little more about that tomorrow. Uh, in the eighth round, just like the seventh round, Joe Frazier had won on all three cards. So I guess that waving in the beginning of the ninth round, Joe felt that the tide had turned. Well, Muhammad Ali fought back. He won the ninth round on all three cards, and at this point, one judge had Ali ahead 5-3-1, another judge had Ali ahead 6-3, and um, referee Perez had Ali ahead 5-3-1. Well, now let's go back for the 10th round. The bell for round 10, just three rounds left. <laughs> left to the chin by Frazier. That brought the raw from the crowd, which at this point, Seems to be favoring Joe, if one can judge by the cheers as the blows are thrown. Go back up, Beatle! Go back up! Hey, Jack, take your tongue! You need no more! Beatle, baby, halfway! After the scoring in the last fight, where Judge Bill Reck gave Frazier 11 rounds to just four for Ali, one hesitates to conjecture on how they're scoring. Ali, by the way, has a right blood mark on his right cheek, the upper right cheek under the eye. Under the eye can cause him no problem. If it starts to bleed, being under the eye, it cannot flow into the eye. As I look at some of the ringside scoring around made by members of the press entirely unofficial, they make it a very close contest up to this point. In other words, this fight is up for grabs. Joe got in a good left to the belly. Ali against the ropes for the last 20 seconds. A minute left in round 10. Scream that left was off Ali's glove. He picked that blow off.
Less than 10 seconds, and this the 10th round. We await the bell for round 11. One writer at ringside just said he's got Ali well ahead. Said he can't lose unless he gets knocked out. Larry Merchant of the New York Post. But Larry Merchant's score had Ali the winner of the last fight, and he was the loser by unanimous decision. You just can't tell how the judges and the referee are scoring this fight. Based upon blows landed, well, I would think that clearly Ali has landed more blows. Just as he did there in a flurry with Joe's head always a target. Less than two minutes to go in round 11. Ali is certainly landing again and again and again in this round. Under New York boxing rules, of course, this fight could be called a draw. If the referee and judges saw it that way. A minute to go in round 11 and you hear Angelo Dundee. Perhaps behind me yelling stay there stay there when Ali was in ring center and scoring hear him saying stay there baby stay there. seconds a little less now left in the 11th round one round after this ten seconds left in the round Ali continuing the score with that jab left jab left jab all night the end of the round You know, going into the final round, it was obvious Ali could not lose, except by Frazier knockout. The judges had Ali ahead, 6-4-1 and 8-3, and, and referee Perez had it Ali 6-4-1. Now let's go back to Madison Square Garden and hear what Howard Cosell has to say. You're looking at Muhammad Ali, of course, Drew Brown Bundini next to him, still exhorting him on. The fight is touch gloves. The referee, Tony Perez, backs off. Frazier swinging wildly, hard, wanting desperately to do damage here. And real damage, a knockout if possible, but he's got to connect. Ali again landing a couple of punches in there. And one thing about Muhammad Ali that I don't think has ever been duly publicized, this man can take a punch. They never talk about that. He's been knocked down and he gets up and he can take a punch. You got to close the show, Pat. I start close the show. This is the twelfth and final round. Looking back on this fight now, while the crowd has had the interest in it that I've described, now I think there's a realization among everybody. 
that this was a 12 round bout between two past champions that was lacking much of the excitement of the prior fight. It's been a boxing contest on Ali's part and he has scored often with his jab and often in combinations but quite clearly without power because he hasn't reddened Ali's face and eyes the way he did in the first fight and Frazier has shown nothing of what he showed in the first fight. Only a minute left in the fight. And Ali is on his toes. Crowd beginning to scream as they realize the countdown continues toward the end of the fight. And perhaps still looking for the one big blow from Joe Frazier that has not manifested itself all night. Ali still raining blows on Frazier's head. Fight approaches its end. Nine seconds, eight seconds, seven seconds, six seconds. Ali having scored with a left and a right holding on. The fight is about to end and it is over. It went the distance. Joe Frazier talking to Ali during the course of the fight, looking at him laughingly, even scornfully. And apparently from his demeanor, Joe Frazier thinks that he has won the decision. But in Ali's corner, well, they're confident that they've won the decision. We'll find out when we come back in just a moment. We're in the ring where absolute bedlam prevails, still awaiting the decision which is about to come up now from ring announcer Joe Boston. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? Please. Here is your decision. The winner by unanimous decision is Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali has won the fight on a unanimous decision. Well, Joe, I don't think you have to apologize to anybody for the way you fought tonight. I don't think that was that far off. You know what I mean? I would say I fought. I throw more effective punts anyway. So I, I got no argument about nothing. Joe, I do have to ask this question, and you understand what Oh, there's me a melee in the ring. What happens now, Joe? Well, Inevitably, the... relax for a while. Take it, then we can decide. Do you we'll want to fight more, Joe? I would like to fight again. So we have time to discuss it here. Okay, Joe. I'm not going to bother you anymore at this moment. Good luck to you. Now, Angelo Dundee, the trainer of Muhammad Ali, will be talking with Muhammad in a moment. Well, my man fought in a really strategic fight, was in great shape, was able to offset him. He won the fight. I mean, there was no baloney tonight. I thought he won the first one. So I don't know how they can make any baloney about this fight. He won it, Howard. Did he fight the fight as you two had planned? It just aired a couple of times. At one time he got against the ropes. He started kidding around with the fans. I didn't want that. It was all serious tonight. That's what I wanted. Seriousness in great shape. Okay, what next? You really want Foreman? Oh, sure, he wants Foreman. Anytime Foreman wants him. He's not looking for Foreman. Foreman's got to be looking for him. He's the, he's the man. Look at this house tonight. All right, can you get him over here, please? All right, we're going to get Muhammad Ali over here as quickly as we can. Give us some protection, please. Back up. Give us some protection, please. First of all, Muhammad. First of all, as I look for a camera which can't get in here, oh, they hear us. will you sound? That's right. Just sound. Congratulations on the Thank victory. Thank you. I should got my dear late camp, Howard. Oh, buddy, God, Allah bless me to come through. Hope to go on to get to the title and then get on out of this. I perform good, but it's...